What's going on guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at scrollable frames for custom Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at scrollable frames for custom Kinter, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, in this video, like I said, we're gonna look at scrolling frames in custom Kinter. Now, with regular Kinter, you have to add a scroll bar to a frame and sort of hack it together in order to make it work. Custom tkinter is much different. We have an actual widget called the scrollable frame widget. It comes with a scroll bar, you could have it vertical up and down like this or horizontal left to right. We'll look at both of those in this video. And you can customize this thing a whole bunch of different ways, change the colors, the look and feel and all that good stuff. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other custom Kinter videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm calling it ctk underscore scroll. It's our basic custom Kinter code that we always have. So let's come down here and let's just create a scrollable frame. So I'm going to call it my underscore frame. And we're going to set that equal to a custom Kinter dot CTK scrollable frame widget. Notice the C and the T are capitalized and the S in scrollable and the F in frame are all capitalized. And we want to put this in root. And for now, we're just going to sort of leave it the way it is. So let's go my underscore frame dot pack pack this guy on the screen, and let's give this a pad Y of 40 to push it down the screen a little bit. So, okay, that's pretty simple. Now we need to put something in this thing so that it shows up on the screen. I'm just gonna put a bunch of buttons in there, and to do that, I'm gonna use a little for loop. So let's go for loop for buttons. And this is just sort of nonsense code, but let's go for X in range of 20. So let's put like 20 of these things on the screen. And then I'm just gonna put a custom tkinter.ctk button. Now we don't want to put this in root like we normally would. We want to put it in the frame. So anytime you want to put anything in this frame to have it scrollable, you put it in my frame like this because that's what we called our frame. There we go. And let's have the text say, this is a button. All right. And then normally I don't pack these on the same line, but since this is a for loop and it's a little weird, let's just go ahead and pack it on the same line. And let's give it a pad Y of like 10 to put a little bit of space between each of these buttons. Now, like I said, normally I say absolutely never ever pack the thing on the same line that you're defining it. But like I said, in this case, these aren't real buttons. Uh, we're just doing this very quickly. So there's a bunch of stuff on the screen. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. So let's head back over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore scroll dot pi. And when we do, we see we've got this frame. It's slightly different colored than the regular background of our app, which is pretty cool. It looks modern and, and neat. It's got this little scroll bar button here. We can scroll down and there's a bunch of buttons here. They don't do anything. Something to put on the screen so that there's, you know, it's scrollable and uh, very cool. So that's really kind of all there is to it. This works just like that. Very easy. You can also change this from vertical up and down to horizontal left and right. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. And to do that, we come over to our frame and let's change the orientation to horizontal. Now I'm not even sure if this is gonna work because our buttons don't really stretch that far across, but at least you'll be able to see. See now the button thing is down here. It doesn't actually scroll because like I said, we've only got, you know, our buttons are only so big. I mean, I guess we could change that if we wanted to. Uh, let's go. Uh, font equals Helvetica and like size 100 or something, make these giant. Head back over here, run this guy again. Okay, so now our buttons are huge and we can scroll from left to right, right? <laughs> so, okay, that's cool. So let's change that back because that's obnoxious. Get rid of all of that. And I'm going to change this back to vertical just so that it's, you know, normal up and down. And if we save this and run it just to make sure real quick that that's looking correct. Yeah, we're back to vertical. 
And vertical is the default. You don't have to put orientation equals vertical as we just saw when we first created this thing. If you don't put the orientation, it just defaults to vertical. All right, so that's the scroll bar. That's really all there is to it. Now we can customize this to look all kinds of different ways. There's all kinds of things we could do. We can make it look absurdly ugly like I always do because I'm very bad at design. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. The first thing you want to look at is the width and the height. So we can change the width and height of this thing. So let's say, I don't know, say 300 by, let's give it a height of like 200. If we save this and run it, now our frame is wider and maybe probably about the same height. But you can change the height and width anything you want. And these are basically in pixels. So that's cool. We can also give this a text label. So that's label underscore text. And so let's say, hello world. And this is kind of weird. You don't see this in a regular frame in Tkinter. So if we save this and run it, we see now at the top, there's this label that says, hello world. It looks kind of like a little button. Very interesting. And it's not scrollable. It stays in place. So very interesting. And we can change the colors here. We'll look at that in a little bit. Well, hey, let's look at it right now. <laughs> Why not? So let's come down here and underneath here, Let's go, what do we want to change? Let's change the label underscore FG underscore color. And let's set that equal to what? Say blue, something like that. We'll wait and do the totally obnoxious things later. Blue's not that obnoxious of a color. Oh, that is actually kind of obnoxious looking. So I changed the foreground color of that label to blue. All right, that's something, I guess. Uh, what else could we do? We can change the label text color. So let's go label underscore text underscore color. And we can set that equal to yellow. This is going to be obnoxious looking. I hope. I hope. <laughs> right. uh, no, you can't really tell, but that's definitely yellow. Hello world is slightly yellow. It's kind of hard to see, but okay, that's cool. Uh, what else can we do? We can change the font of that text. So that's going to be label underscore font. So we can change it to, let's say, Helvetica and the font size of say 18, something like that, make it nice and bigger. There we go, nice and big, nice and bigger, whatever. So now Hello World is a little bit bigger. We can also change the anchor where this text is. You can see by default it's center and that looks good to me. But if you wanted to change that for some crazy reason, <laughs> you could just go label underscore anchor and we could set that equal to, for instance, west. Now here, let me just copy and paste in your options here. Now, these are the basic Kinter directional options. So north, south, east, and west, and then like northeast, southeast, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest, that sort of thing. Just the basic, you know, west, north, east, and south, and then of course center. So we've got a W, which is going to be what? Left, I guess. Uh, so if we save this and run it, all right, now it's over here. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to center just because it's going to bother me otherwise. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but it's centered by default and we've already looked at that. So, all right, that's pretty much all you can do with the label stuff. But what else can we do with the actual frame? Well, we can change the border if we want. So let's go border underscore width and let's set that to like three or something. By default, there was no border. It just sort of the frame itself was a different color. And now we've got this sort of chunky border, but it's not great because the scroll bar doesn't get a border and there's not really anything we can do to fix that. So that looks kind of goofy. I don't know. You could do it if you want. Uh, maybe there's some way to hack around that, but I haven't really discovered it. We can change the color of this border while we're at it. I mean, hey, it looks goofy. So let's just lean into it. Let's go border underscore color. And let's set that equal to green. Now you can use your colors like green, like I did here, or you can use your hex color codes. I don't know what the hex color code is for green. Let's say three, eight, nine, seven, one, one, two. I don't know, whatever. You could use those hex color codes if you want. We're just going to stick with the word green. So head back over here, run this guy again. And now our horrible looking border is green. So, all right, whatever. So that's the border thing. What else can we do to the frame itself? Well, we can start changing some colors in the frame. So let's start out with the foreground underscore color and let's set that to red. This is gonna start to get crazy. Oh yeah, 
right? Yeah, that's that's obnoxious. So now the frame itself is red. Okay, we can change this scroll thing here, not just the little button here that we drag up and down, but the background of the scroll itself. So let's try that. Let's start with let's let's give us some space here. So let's go scroll bar underscore FG underscore color. And let's set that equal to yellow, I guess. <laughs> Save this and run it. And here we go. Now again, this doesn't look great because it's you know kind of blocky and weird. I don't know. You can do that if you want. You can also change the button itself. You can see it's sort of uh gray or silver or whatever color that is. We can change that. Let's go scroll bar underscore button underscore color. And let's set that equal to what? Say pink. Solid color, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, that's that's not great. So it's pink when you hover, it changes to a different color. So let's change that as well. We can modify that by calling the scroll bar underscore button underscore hover underscore color. Getting ridiculous. And let's set that equal to blue, maybe. I don't know. Save this and run it. So now when we hover, boom, it turns blue. Oh, that's actually pretty nice looking. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, okay. What else can we do? Well, that's pretty much it. Color wise, we can change the actual frame itself. We can change the corner radius. You can see it's mostly square here, but we can make it really square if we want. Pull up our code here. Where we go. There we go. By changing the corner underscore radius. And you could do this with most widgets in custom Kinter. So if we set that to say one, that's going to make it very angular, very squarish. You can see it's just choom, choom, very 90 degree square. We can change it to make it round too. Uh, we could change it to say 50 and the, the bigger the number, the more round it's going to be, right? So if we come back over here, well, that's kind of cool looking, right? But now notice, all of our stuff has sort of disappeared. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, let's see. Maybe if we change this to like 20 or something. There we go. Everything bought back. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe the roundness covered the scroll or something. I don't know. But you'll notice everything is quite a bit pushed down now when we rounded this corner radius. So uh, sort of keep that in mind. And of course, you don't have to have a label up here at the top. It says hello world. You don't have to have that. You don't have to do any of this stuff. This is we're just doing it to make a point of what you can do. But yeah, pretty cool. And a lot more customization than a regular frame in Kinter. The scroll thing is just awesome because if you've done scroll bars in regular Kinter, you have to create a scroll widget and then like append it to a frame widget and then set the, all these things. It's just a hassle. It's always been a hassle. It works, but it's it's really kind of a pain. This is so much nicer. And uh, really just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.